Now, somebody who is not crazy, but is a huge sack of shit, is South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. Senator Lindsey Graham just told a group of reporters in the Capitol that he's also spoken to Secretaries of State in Nevada and Arizona. This is in addition to the Secretary of State in Georgia. He said he's doing it as a senator who is worried about election integrity. This was after it came out that he was pressuring the Republican Secretary of State in Georgia to throw out legally counted, legally casted ballots. We have proof of election fraud. And it comes from a sitting senator named Lindsey Graham. Now, the Secretary of State in Arizona fired back. This is false. I have not spoken with Lindsey Graham. This is an attempt for Lindsey Graham to say, Oh, no, 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 I'm just, I'm just checking in on all the different states. I'm worried about the integrity of our election. But this this right wing fantasy world, all this bullshit results in shit like this. Where the Secretary of State in Arizona is getting death threats and groups marching outside of her office. Video obtained by 12 News. So Here we go. This is the video. Because these right wingers are insane. And they've been foon sped complete bullshit. That's a joke from the other night. They've been spoon fed complete and total bullshit for so long by right wing media. They are certain that they are correct. I see it every day. I talk to my right wing friends, I present them the evidence. And they say, oh, you're just delusional. Because they ha- they are in this echo chamber where they are constantly being reinforced that their fantasy is correct. No matter what you say to them, their response is always going to be, oh, well, that's a liberal rag. Oh, well, that's bias, blah, 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 blah. It's like when I debated the old Gord dude. Man, I I took his ass to school. I showed him how he was wrong about everything, but at the end of the debate, he thought he had won. I believe that he legitimately believes that. Because he thinks I'm just crazy. Because he gets to go into his little bubble on the parlor, on conservative Facebook, And just have his stupid ass beliefs reinforced over and over and over again. And they don't need evidence. Oh, it's just common sense. Now, I totally believe that Lindsey Graham is an absolutely horrendous, horrible human being. Luckily, I am not the only one. A former staffer explains why Graham is everything that's wrong with American politics. And he is. Exactly. Everything's fake news. You are exactly right, Jam. Lindsey Graham is the worst. I worked for Lindsey Graham's 2016 presidential campaign as his national director of ballot access and delegates. As part of his senior staff, I spent one-on-one time with Graham advising him on different political initiatives related to getting him on every primary ballot and securing delegates for the Republican convention. I worked for him because I saw him at the time as a man of moral clout who was unafraid to speak his mind and who would be a good guide for the American people. Needless to say, I was wrong. Since Donald Trump took office, Graham, the man who told America that Donald Trump was nothing more than a race-baiting, xenophobic, religious bigot. That's all these people. There's super cuts all over YouTube and Twitter that you can go and see. All the people that suck Trump's ass to this day were in 2016 talking about how horrible, how horrible the man was. 
I think it was even Graham who said if they nominate Trump, the Republican Party will get destroyed and they will deserve it. Every politician moves and shakes in some way. It's the nature of the beast. But for Graham, his song and dance has been more aggressive than most. It includes lies, over-the-top rhetoric, immoral conduct, and a direct assault on our democratic institutions. Now, there was a opinion piece in the Washington Post earlier today. It said that Trump was a test for America's democracy, and 9 out of 10 GOP senators are failing that test. I think they're all failing that test. And Here's the thing is Republicans have never given a shit about democracy. I have been saying it for years because God, probably about six, seven years ago is when it started popping up. When you said the country was a democracy, they look, no, 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 we're a constitutional Republic. I'm like, no, that's our system of government. Our system of voting is democratic vote. We elect representatives by democratic vote. We are a democracy, but they've, went out on this complete propaganda mission to try to tell people we're not a democracy. So when this time came, when, when Trump, because let's, let's, let's face it, Republicans don't actually believe in Trump. Surely these, surely Lindsey Graham is smart enough to see Trump for what he is. Like we said, he pointed out his flaws in 2016. But they see Trump as an opportunity. Unfortunately, Trump is what the Republican voters have always wanted in a politician. Now, as I said last night, I understand why people voted for Trump in 2016. I played you the fist bump between uh, Kamala Harris and Lindsey Graham on the Senate floor. People are tired of performative bullshit from politicians. So I completely get the appeal of Donald Trump. Now, I didn't vote for him, but I also didn't vote for Hillary. I was wrong. I was wrong not to do that. And I've decided that I'll probably never not vote Democratic in a national race for the rest of my life. Because it's more about picking who I... I feel Hillary would have been a better opponent to have in the White House. Because the last four years, what have we gotten done? My show, since I've been doing this show back in April, has been nothing but me playing videos of Republicans and going, God, look how stupid they are. I fancy myself a comedian, but what the fuck can I say that's funnier than just playing their videos and going, God, look how stupid they are. So I wish that it had been Hillary in the White House the last four years. She would have made a much better opponent for me, and I might have been able, the progressives might have been able to move her on some policy instead We're having to put out the fire and, and, and maybe, maybe we might have been able to mount a challenge to her in the 2020 primary. As disliked as she was, we might have been able to primary her and take her out as sitting president. So I'm happy to admit that I was wrong on that. But I understand why people wanted to vote for Trump because they wanted him to get in there and fuck shit up. They were tired of the performative nonsense between the two parties. The Democrats are almost like a controlled opposition. And it's be- it is because the people that own the politicians, the oligarchs, <laughs> The billionaires, the multinational corporations, they don't want the Democrats to propose policy. They bought the Democratic politicians just like they bought the entire Republican Party.
That's our enemy. And I, f I feel like Hillary would have embodied that so well that a Bernie 2020 in the primary might have very well been able to take her out. We'll never know, though. Now, over on Fox News, even though they're still living in a fantasy world because they're trying not to lose viewers, they know who their base is. And viewers have been fleeing from Fox for shit like Newsmax, OAN. Seriously, he did. But that also, that goes back to the opportunistic shit with the Republican Party. The Republican Party has been wanting to privatize the Postal Service for years. That's why Louis DeJoy, the Postmaster, owns stock in some shipping company. The Postmaster General. They saw Trump as an opportunity. Let him create chaos, and then and then we'll get into all the different bureaucracies in government and fuck shit up. And that's what they did. The post office is a great example of that. <laughs> now, on Fox News, it seems like Brian Kilmeade is actually coming to grips with the reality of the situation here. The United States, uh, while he continues to fight on, and this is probably going to be the, the end of the week for Pennsylvania if they don't produce something, I think it's going to, in the country's best interest, if he starts coordinating on the virus and starts coordinating with security with the Biden team and just brief them because on the virus, we need, we're going to be able to get this out as soon as two weeks. We need to coordinate on the transportation and implementation, uh, and you'll see how thorough the planning is, has been so we don't drop the ball in a little while. Meanwhile, I wonder just how thorough the planning has been. Kill me gets it. Now Biden has said that it's it's okay that he's not receiving security briefings because uh, Harris is on one of the intelligence committees in the Senate. So they do actually have a line to knowing what's going on in terms of national security. The access to the vaccine tax task force and their plans for distributing a vaccine, that is what is important. Because it's, it's going to be Biden overseeing the rollout of the vaccine, not the Trump administration. But you know, you know, you know, even though I was called a snowflake, a cuck, a libtard for years and years, facts don't care about your feelings, yada, yada, yada. According to this dude, we should totally give Trump some time to come to terms with the fact that America doesn't want him anymore. And I think it's just a matter of a lot of people waiting out until, you know, the president comes to terms with this. Look, we all believe that every vote should count. And He's a crybaby. In this election, every lawsuit that's legitimate could be, you know, gone through, but... We have a tradition of this country of looking at the results, congratulating the president-elect, starting the transition process, and going forward. And that's like that is essential to the passage and the strength and the survival of democracy. I had somebody on Parlor last night tell me Joe Biden's not the president-elect. I'm like, what are, what are you talking about? And she said, read the Constitution. I said, okay, I'll buy. What in the Constitution proves that Joe Biden isn't the president-elect? And she said something about they certify the Electoral College on December 14th. I'm like, okay, but he's the president-elect, meaning he won the election. They don't call it the president-certified. <laughs>